Greetings, friends. Welcome to this weekend Bible study of random subjects. Uh, my name is Jerry Ogles, and this is a, uh, a presentation of the Anglican Orthodox Communion Worldwide. Earlier in the week, we discussed uh, the seventh article of the 39 Articles of Religion, which related to the Old Testament and its importance to our understanding uh, the New Testament. And so uh, tonight, I'm taking a subject from that very, uh, uh, very topic, which is the burden of Isaac. As you recall, Isaac was the the only son considered the only son of Abraham, the one whom he loved that God asked him to take to a place that he would designate and sacrifice him. Isaac is a type of Christ. A type is nothing like the real thing, but it points to the real thing. Isaac came by promise, miraculously born by promise to a mother who was over 90 years of age. He was the beloved son of his father, just as Jesus was the beloved son of his father and was born by miraculous promise. Born as a man, conceived by the Holy Ghost. And Jesus bore his cross up Golgotha, just as Isaac bore the wood up the Mount of Moriah to be sacrificed. So let's look at that, the burden of Isaac, and uh, we'll begin by, by looking at the 22nd chapter of Genesis, uh, beginning at the 6th through the 8th verse. And let's recite that together. If you've got your Bibles, please read along with me on this. <clears throat> and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. God would provide himself a lamb. He would provide himself the lamb. He would be the lamb in, in the form of Jesus Christ. Then looking at John 19, 16 through 18, we see what Pilate, what action he took after he found Jesus was innocent. Then delivered he him unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called uh, the place of a skull, which is also called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him on, on either side, one, and Jesus in the midst. These two texts, one from Genesis, the other from the Gospel of St. John are profoundly precious to the believer. I was persuaded to speak on the subject today by a comment made by a dear sister concerning the way of the cross yesterday in a letter. That way was conceived in eternity past in the councils of heaven before the worlds were ever made. The bloody sacrifices of animals per se were not efficacious to redeem or atone for sin. But these sacrifices pointed to the only future sacrifice that could atone, and that is the blood of the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, he is the Lamb of God. It was by faith in that future promise that Abraham believed that our sins were mitigated in the dark days before Christ. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings, Hosea 6.6. 6. We find confirmation in the book of Hebrews. But Christ, being come in high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place 
having ordained eternal redemption for us. For if the, bull, the blood of bulls and goats and of ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to, say, to serve the living God. That's Hebrews 9, 11 through 14. How does the story of Isaac forepicture the sacrifice of Christ? In many ways it does. Isaac came, as we said earlier, by miraculous conception when Sarah was upward of 90 years of age. Like Jesus, his birth was promised by God. Like Jesus, he was the only begotten son of his father. You may object that Ishmael was the firstborn son, disqualifying Isaac as the one and only. Ishmael came at the scheming of Sarah and not by the intention of God or by the promise God had made. God had made the promise to both Sarah and Abraham. Therefore, a surrogate mother could not have conceived that promised son. Isaac was the only son well beloved by whom, uh, by, by both Sarah and Abraham. So when God commanded Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, how do you suppose that made Abraham feel? And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I shall tell thee of. Genesis 22, 1 and 2. It should be noted at the outset that Moriah is precisely the same mount upon which the temple is built, and very likely the precise location of the intended sacrifice of Isaac. Do you remember the piercing question of Isaac at the base of Moriah? Where is the lamb for a burnt offering? In Abraham's mind, that lamb was Isaac, but in God's providence, it would not be so. Unwittingly, Abraham responded, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. In simple English, this means God will provide himself to be the sacrifice which he became in the, in the fullness of time at Calvary. Like Christ, Isaac bore the wood for his own sacrifice up the mount. But God withheld the hand of Abraham from the sacrifice. Just as Christ wore the crown of thorns, so did the male lamb, the ram, whose head was caught in the thorn bush as a substitute for the final sacrifice of Christ. Even though the sacrifice was not required of Isaac, he nonetheless carried the wood for that sacrifice. Just as we take up our crosses daily to follow Christ in sacrificial love. If any man will come after me, Jesus says, let him deny himself and take upon him his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Luke 9, 23 through 24. Commandments of God written on table of stone, but in the crimson ink of blood on the soft sinews of the heart is what we have today. It is that means by which we bear our crosses, or rather bear them up on the almighty shoulders of the Son of God, Savior, Redeemer, Lord, and King. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Hebrews 8.10 I hope you are taking your cross up daily and following Christ. I hope you will also remember that God pointed out in the Old Testament and in many points the beauty of his coming son as a sacrifice for us, as a redeemer, as a savior, as a king, as the king of kings, as the sovereign of all creation. Remember this this coming week. Remember in your prayers to remember those who suffer in bondage. 
or in persecution abroad or even in this country. God bless you all. Have a great week.